in this video I just wanted to have like a fireside chat with everybody and basically tell you all my deconversion story first of all from the bottom of my heart I would like to thank all of my subscribers <laughs> you guys are super engaged all right I don't post that often because uh, first of all I work a full-time job and for some crazy reason I run three channels I enjoy getting in and responding to comments um, when I can but it's already to the point where it's getting difficult to catch up that's a good problem to have I even enjoy the ones from Christians who quote scriptures to me even in the video about the Bible advocating for slavery most of the comments have been positive but every now and then I get negative comments which have all been about the same thing let me quickly address that I'm aware that I use content in my videos that is not my own so that's a valid criticism attribution is very important and going forward I will be more thoughtful about that and make it a priority my channel is still very young so I ask that you all be patient and allow me to grow I'd get bored really quick if I constrain myself to only doing compilation videos secondly these compilation videos are not just me grabbing a 20 minute clip and re-uploading it I'm actually going through 25 to 30 minutes sometimes one hour clips and finding three to five minute snippets sometimes they're more for entertainment value sometimes it's for the teaching in the clip but don't get it twisted it's a meticulous process also the audience has spoken they enjoy it so as long as YouTube doesn't stop me and trust me if you're a content creator you know YouTube will stop you if they don't like something I'm going to continue to make these kind of videos but I've already been rather long-winded so let me get into my deconversion story I was raised in a single parent household my mom and I were from a small town she often has told me that she got saved not long before giving birth to me so I was in church before I knew I was in church when I was young I loved church I loved singing the songs and hearing the preaching and I got saved at age 13 but I can remember when I was probably about 14 the devil started messing with me all of a sudden I had this feeling like God wasn't real it wasn't like I was an atheist it was just like I didn't feel like God was there or something I didn't I didn't feel his presence and it scared me because at that young age I already knew that if you didn't believe in God you would go to hell so I found myself pacing the floor praying to God for him to help me believe in him so I wouldn't die and burn eternally I know that that may not make a lot of sense but that's what happened to me but after a while that feeling went away but when I wasn't half atheist <laughs> I had other problems has anybody ever imagined what God looked like I've tried to but of course I had no idea how I could ever have an accurate image in my mind but uh, my other problem with God came from sin since God never really talked to you this problem came from listening to other people so not only by age 14 was I doubting God I was also doubting my salvation Do you know how horrible it is for a young child to be wondering if he prayed the right prayer with the right amount of sincerity to be able to escape hellfire but I would pray and read the word and regain assurance of my salvation but just know that I've said the sinner's prayer countless times it's like washing your hands it's better to be safe than sorry so let's fast forward through high school and college now I'm in the Air Force and I'm still a Christian I would go to Bible study every Tuesday and I even wore a chaplain rope on my uniform I was the real deal I had my doubts early on that I suppressed later on but if anybody asks me I tell them I was a Christian ask anybody who knew me they would tell you I was a Christian hell ask them now and they'll still say the same thing because they don't know 
But I enjoyed reading the Bible. There was a time when I really did. Because even though I had my hangups, I was taught that I was going the right way. There was no alternative. It was supposed to be like marriage, till death do us part. But we all know marriages don't always work out. Jesus, I want a divorce. Anyway, let me tell you, in probably like the late 90s, early 2000s, I didn't have much respect for atheists. I never, I had never met one. Probably just heard the word on TV or something or read it. I probably said, that's a stupid belief. Or you know the common misunderstandings Christians have about atheism. Basically how they can't believe that some people don't believe in God. But back to my story. A friend from church told me about this international Bible study program. This is around 2010 or 2011. I loved it. I went every week. And after two or three years, they asked me to teach children the Bible. I was honored. But around the same time, I remember it was in 2014, I looked up the way of the master on YouTube. I already knew about the show. It's Kirk Cameron from Growing Pains and Ray Comfort. They evangelized strangers on the streets. You know, they had the thing where they would go through this whole process with the person of, have you ever lied before? What does that make you? You know, and a lot of times the person would say, it just makes me human. They're like, no, you're a liar. Have you ever thought of a woman with lust in your heart? Oh, that ma- you know, that makes you an adulterer. You know, where are you gonna spend eternity? All of that. And that's how deep I was at this point. But I'm sorry, Christians. A deep love for God's word can be dangerous for your faith. Or maybe I could blame YouTube because the related video section led me to the atheist experience. And four years later, I ended up starting this channel. If you made it this far, then you enjoy my content and I appreciate it. I want to fulfill the Great Commission, but for atheists. I want to normalize atheism in general and to make it okay to be a black atheist. So thank you for watching. Check out whatever video is on your screen to watch next. And I'll see you in the next video.